hi in this video we're going to see about the structure properties and functions of platelets so the most commonly asked questions from this part of uh, platelets are short essay questions it can be asked like describe the morphology properties and functions of the platelets or just like uh, describe the structure and the functions of platelets so we'll see how we can approach or how to write this answer we can start the answer with an introduction and uh, it should include the points like platelets are round or oval disc shaped blood cells they are the smallest blood cells which have a diameter of just 6 2 to 4 micrometer they are otherwise called thrombocytes because thrombo means clot so these are the uh, platelets are the cells that are involved in the formation of clot so that is why they are called thrombocytes and they are non nucleated then you should not uh, forget to write the normal platelet count which is 1.5 to 4 lakhs per millimeter cube and that they are formed mainly from cells called megakaryocytes so it is from the megakaryocytes the cytoplasm just pinches off to form uh, the platelets next we will see about the structure of the platelets so platelets like other cells have got the cell membrane which is trilaminar and then just beneath the cell membrane it's got this microtubular layer which is responsible for its disc shape when it is not activated or in the resting state it is a uh, disc shape because of this microtubular layer and it has got a canalicular system which acts like a reserve membrane the cytoplasm also contains many granules which are called the alpha granules as well as another different type of granules which are called the dense granules okay it also contains glycogen as well as mitochondria to provide the energy now we've got some other structures called dense tubules which are loaded with calcium that help the platelet in contraction and uh, on the surface you can also mark the receptors especially the glycoprotein receptors like group 2b 3a as well as the glycoprotein 1b receptors because these there are many other receptors present but these two are very important based on a uh, it has got very important functions so this much can be uh, written about the structure and this diagram can be drawn when the structure of platelets is asked so now we'll see some important points regarding the uh, different parts of the platelets so first of all cell membrane as i said before it's got a trilaminar structure and it's covered by glycoproteins see we have seen that uh, there are uh, glycoproteins present on the surface which is important for the platelet function not only that it helps in to prevent the adherence of platelets to the normal vascular endothelium okay so glycoproteins prevents adherence of the platelets to the normal vascular endothelium so these are the important points regarding the cell membrane we will see about the cytoplasm see as i said before the cytoplasm contains a microtubular layer just beneath the membrane which helps to which is responsible for the disc shape it also has contractile proteins that help the platelets for contraction okay so these are the important points regarding the uh, contractile elements of the cytoplasm now the cytoplasm also contains granules so as i said before it's got dense granules as well as alpha granules so what do these dense granules contain dense granules contain substances like atp adp serotonin calcium as well as prostaglandins so atp adp serotonin calcium as well as prostaglandins are present in the dense granules whereas alpha granules contain many substances but the important ones are fibrinogen as well as the von willebrand factor so there are many many components of alpha granules but at least remember these two which are very important that is fibrinogen and von willebrand factor next we will see about the canalicular system of the platelet so there are two types of canalicular system one is the open canaliculi as you can see here uh, these are especially important when platelets are activated because there will be release of the secretions from this canaliculi to the exterior and another set of uh, canaliculi system are the dense tubules which are also called the closed canaliculi now these are loaded with calcium and this, this is again responsible for the contractile function of the platelets so that's about the canalicular system so in the structure we've seen about the cell membrane what are the what are the functions of the cell membrane we've seen about the important components of the cytoplasm as well as we've seen about the canalicular system now we'll move on to the platelet properties so what are the properties of the platelets so mainly there are three properties the first one is platelet adhesion what is meant by platelet adhesion 
see for that we have to uh, just see the structure see suppose this is a sub endothelial collagen so we know that whenever there is a vascular injury the sub endothelial collagen will be exposed okay now when the sub endothelial collagen is exposed the von willebrand factor will bind on to this collagen okay so here you can see this is the von willebrand factor which is binded on to the sub endothelial collagen so now what happens the platelets will in turn bind to the von willebrand factor via the gp1b receptor this glycoprotein 1b receptor causes the binding of the platelet to the von willebrand factor so this property of the platelets by which it can adhere to the vascular wall is called platelet adhesion okay so what's meant by what is what is platelet adhesion see when there's a vascular injury there will be exposure of, exposure of the subendothelial collagen which will cause binding of von willebrand factor now platelets can bind on to this von willebrand factor via the gp1b receptor so this is called platelet adhesion now next property is platelet activation so what is meant by platelet activation when the platelet on binding to this von willebrand factor what happens is there will be a sudden change in shape of the platelets so we know the platelet is normally disc shaped but when it is activated it becomes irregular with many pseudopod formation so see here you can see that there are many the the disc shape has been lost and there are many pseudopod processes that are coming from the platelets okay not only there is a change in shape but also there will be release of these granules there are alpha and the dense granules present in the cytoplasm and there will be release of these granules especially as I said before the alpha granules contains fibrinogen and wall bilivan factor whereas the dense granules contains ADP, ATP, serotonin, thromboxin A2 so all these will be released and this is called the release reaction okay so the second property of the platelet is platelet activation when the platelet binds on to this uh, one willebrand factor, there will be a change in shape and there will be release reaction. Now, the third property of the platelet is platelet aggregation. See, the platelets not only adhere to the vascular epithelium, but endothelium, but it can also aggregate or adhere to other platelets. How does that happen? See, platelets bind with other platelets via fibrinogen and G2B3A receptors. How is that done? See, suppose this is the activated platelet so we know that there is a gp1b receptor along with that there is another receptor called gp2b3a receptor see gp2b3a receptor now this along with fibrinogen will bind on to other platelets now this will help in platelet aggregation okay so what are the three properties of platelets first one was platelet adhesion then platelet activation and the third is platelet aggregation okay so these are the properties of platelets next we'll see the functions of platelets so the important functions of platelets are it has a role in temporary hemostasis a role in blood coagulation a role in clot retraction as well as in vascular growth so we'll quickly see each one by one what is the role of platelet in temporary hemostasis see we know that whenever there is a cut in the vascular wall initially there will be vasoconstriction and then we'll have what is known as a plated plug formation it is a plated plug formation which temporarily stops the bleeding so how does a plated do that so see suppose if this is the endothelium uh, as i said before whenever there is a vascular injury there will be exposure of the worn uh, subendothelial collagen which leads to binding of the worn willebrand factor next what will happen our platelets will come and along with uh, the with the help of the GP1B receptor, it will bind on to the von Willebrand factor. Next, what will happen? There will be activation of the platelets and there will be release of its granules, which will in turn cause aggregation of the platelets. Okay. So, thus it will form a plated plug. So, that is the role of platelets in temporary hemostasis. What about in blood coagulation? See, we know that in blood coagulation, it mainly consists of the intrinsic pathway as well as the extrinsic pathway. See, extrinsic pathway is activated whenever there is tissue damage and it will release factor 3, which in turn will lead to activation of factor 7. And this activated factor 7A along with calcium and plated phospholipids will cause activation of factor 10. This is one method of activating factor 10. Next, we have this intr intrinsic pathway 
wherein there will be activation of factor 12. This factor 12 will cause activation of factor 11. Factor 11 in the presence of calcium will cause activation of factor 9. And factor 9 in the presence of calcium and plated phospholipids will cause activation of factor 10. Right? And then we have this common pathway which starts with the activated factor 10. So activated factor 10 along with other factors like uh, activated factor 5, calcium and plated phospholipids will convert prothrombin to thrombin. This thrombin will then activate fibrinogen to form fibrin. And this fibrin in turn is stabilized by this factor 13A. So this is the coagulation cascade. So what is the role of platelet in this blood coagulation pathway? See, we have seen in many multiple situations there that we require platelet phospholipids. So the release of these platelet phospholipids and other factors from the platelets initiate and aid clot formation. Moreover, it has a very important role to play in the intrinsic pathway for clot formation. So see here again, this is the same example that I showed before. We know that initially there will be a temporary platelet plug formation. But after that, there will be this uh, fibrin formation which will in turn cause this clot. Right? So for this proper fibrin formation to occur, we need this platelet phospholipid complex. So that is the role of platelets in blood coagulation. The next function of platelets is in So what happens is within a few minutes of the clot formation, the clot begins to contract and squeeze out the fluid which is called the serum. Okay, so when after the clot is formed, the clot just retracts or contracts and squeeze out all the fluid that is present inside. So this is called clot retraction. And for this clot retraction, it needs platelets. So clot retraction is mainly the function of the platelets. So what, what, what the platelets does is the platelets which are entrapped in this clot, they release a factor called fibrin stabilizing factor. So this will actually stabilize the fibrin and makes the fibrin stable. Okay. Next, the contractile proteins that are present inside the platelets will pull the clot closer so that these damaged walls, vascular walls are brought closer. So all this will cause clot retraction. So remember how does platelet cause, cause clot retraction? First, they release a factor called fibrin stabilizing factor. Second, they have contractile proteins which will pull this clot closer. Okay, so that is how platelets help in clot retraction. And finally, we said it helps in vascular growth. How does platelet help in vascular growth? Platelet release a factor called platelet derived growth factor. So this will help in the repair of endothelium and thereby vascular growth. So the functions of platelets are, it helps in temporary hemostasis, it helps in blood coagulation, it helps in clot retraction as well as vascular growth. Now for some additional scoring points, see whenever there is a, a physiology question, it is always important that you add on some clinical aspects. So the clinical aspects associated with this part of platelets is, first a congenital absence of glycoprotein, GP1B, can cause a disease called burnout solid disease syndrome. And a, a, a defect in von Willebrand factor can cause von Willebrand disease and both of this will cause a defective plated adhesion and thereby it can cause a bleeding disorder. Another applied aspect is we, we know we use anti-plated drugs such as aspirin in the treatment and prevention of myocardial infarction and stroke. See myocardial infarction and stroke are produced due to formation of blood clots inside the blood vessel. So anti-plated drugs like aspirin can cause uh, the treatment can be used as a treatment as well as prevention of myocardial infarction and stroke. So in a nutshell today in this video we have seen about the structure, we have seen the diagram, then uh, we have seen the important properties of platelets, what were they? Plated uh, adhesion, plated activation as well as plated aggregation and then we have seen the functions, its role in temporary as well as definitive hemostasis and we have seen some applied aspects. So I hope this concept is clear. Thank you.